It's time, Kip. Are you ready? It is. I'm red eye. Right. Bye, Kip. Right, we're gonna hand it's it off to you. you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm I'm counting like 140 going up to 150 people online right now. I really, really appreciate that you have taken some time to spend with me. I hope that when we're done, you'll decide that this was in fact time well spent. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on uh, two very specific uh, techniques that I have used with success in the past. It is, th these techniques have helped me find talented people to invite to my team and then to, and then to train them, to give them professional development while at the same time actually freeing myself up to, to be better at my job. So, uh, so these are things that, that I thought you would like to know and try. And, uh, and I hope that they work for you as well as they've worked for me. And, um, so yeah, so thanks for being here. Uh, I'm doing my very best to monitor the Discord uh, channel as we go. And in fact, I'm going to be inviting you to uh, talk uh, with me uh, as I go through uh, the material today. So if you're not in Discord yet, please go into the Zoom chat. And Ryan has actually provided you with a link that will allow you to get into uh, the, the chat here. So. Uh, so please do that because there, I'm going to be putting in um, uh, a couple of URLs. You're going to want to get those because they will take you to uh, the tools that I'm going that I'm going to share uh, with you today. So you're definitely going to want that, and then you're going to want to be in there as well because I'm going to invite you to share some uh, some of the some of the uh, exercises that I have for you, and you'll be able to see hopefully other people's. Uh, exercise uh, responses. And I find that, yes, I'm here to share some things with you, but you're going to learn from other people as well by, by seeing what they contribute to the conversation, I think is going to really help you uh, deepen your, your understanding. Let me just take a few moments in case you don't know who I am or where I'm coming from. But today, uh, after 20 plus years, you know, I continue to work as a chief information security officer, uh, which is something I started doing in 2003. I got into uh, what, what was then called computer and network security in um, 1992. So I've been, been, been doing this for a long time. In 2015, so about seven years ago, I founded a company. It's called Cyber Risk Opportunities. And I've got a small team and we operate as a virtual chief information security officer. So uh, not, not strangely enough, I have built a team in my company that greatly resembles the teams that I've built as CISO working for, uh, for other people. And, uh, and now we've, we, we help companies um, all over the world, it turns out, um, not just you know not just in the area that I live in in, in the Seattle area. Um, but listen, the only way that I can do this work is if I build a team. And so I've been spending a ton of my time finding the best people that I could find to put on the different teams that I was trying to create, trying to develop them professionally so that they could grow and be more capable and so that we could do our job better uh, serving our customers and then uh, and then encouraging them to stick around right then in the HR world that's called retention and my goal was to uh, for myself in the midst of all that was to be able to work on my program instead of in my program and so that's that's what I ho I hope that you're going to take that on as a goal for yourself um but now what I want to do is I want you to, I want to invite you to be in discord with me. And what I want you to do is, is answer this question. What, what do you think I mean when I suggest that as the, as the team leader, you should be working on your program instead of working in your program. And I would love to see um, your thoughts about what I'm trying to say. Okay, I hear, I see uh, developing the strategic goals. I, yes, uh, but, but, but that's not all, so keep going. Uh, the overall framework, not the technical details. Yes, you're absolutely in the ballpark. Expanding and honing in skills of the program versus being in the weeds on projects. Yes, always improve. Yes, this is, this is all true. <clears throat> and maybe you could tell me why 
why would I want to work on my program instead of work in my program? I mean, what, what, uh, because I mean, if you are somebody who's supervising people today and you came up through the ranks, don't you feel tempted to get your hands back on the keyboard, right? Don't you want to get in there, roll up your sleeves and, you know, and actually do some of the work that you've really loved doing. I can tell you that's a temptation that I feel all the time. Uh, okay, so why would you want to do this to be able to scale and grow? Yes. Um, oh, I love it. This is so, the, the amount of comments in here is coming in so fast now. I can't even repeat everything that you're saying. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so here's here's all of the things you've said, but here's something particular that I want you to, uh, to think about. Um, if you can work on your program instead of in your program, that that's going to let you do the tasks that only you can do as the team lead. And many of those tasks were mentioned in Discord, right? Like the strategic goals, the overall framework, um, thinking about how your team's going to scale and, and grow. Those are things that only you as the team lead can do. If you're too busy uh, in the trenches, you know, shoulder to shoulder with the people on your team actually doing the work of your program, then when when do you have time to, to, to do that stuff? So you've got to delegate is really uh, an important uh, thing here. In order for you to focus on your core competencies, you have to, to delegate. I don't know if you've ever thought about delegating or how that sounds to you. I can tell you that when I first started uh, thinking about delegating, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I was a control freak. And I was, I was like afraid that if I, if I asked somebody to do something that it would, it would train wreck. Right. And, and so I had to learn over time how to be really good at, at delegating. So, uh, so we're going to talk about delegation today. That's one of the big things we're going to, we're going to talk about. Um, and before we really start to dive into it, I wanted to point out this open source project that I am helping to lead. It's called the Cybersecurity uh, Hiring Manager Handbook. And you can see the URL to it here. So this is an open source project. <clears throat> we started it uh, about a year and a few months ago. And it's, it's not finished. No open source project is really ever finished. We're constantly working on it. And there's been about 50, five, zero experienced hiring managers who have worked on the handbook handbook. So if you're not aware of the handbook, it's online, it's available now. I want you to go check it out. I'm going to refer to the handbook today during the workshop. And um, uh, and so when you get a chance, I want you to go uh, check it out. We've published it under the Creative Commons International 4.0 license. That was the most liberal license uh, that we could find. And, and the idea here is we want people to really own this thing, to really embrace it and to use it and to contribute to it and not have to worry about um, you know, any kind of, of restrictions. The only thing you need to do if you were to republish uh, the handbook, for example, is just attribution. That, that's the only thing that you really have to do with, with this uh, open source license. <clears throat> okay, having said that, and thank you, Barking Seal, for, uh, for putting it into uh, the, the, the chat. Really appreciate it. So delegation, let's start talking about delegation. Um, now, the I wanna teach you a technique today. Also, I wanna give you a tool that will help you implement this technique. And I'm gonna uh, show you how I use it. And then I'm also gonna give you an opportunity to try it today during the, uh, during the workshop so that you can get a chance to have a little bit of hands-on time. Now, I learned this tool from, uh, from somebody else um, and that somebody else was, uh, her name was Susan Scott, and she wrote a book called Fierce Conversations. If anybody's read Fierce Conversations, uh, you know, go ahead and let me know in, in the live chat. Um, it's a really helpful book. I uh, adopted many ideas and practices out of that book, but the number, my number one takeaway was really this, this uh, way to delegate and, uh, <laughs> and not have my inner control freak uh, go crazy in the in the process. So, um, what what's great about delegation? Well, delegation and particularly this technique that I'm going to teach you is going to create a very efficient and very effective approach to the delegation 
uh, activity that, that you've got to get good at. And what it's going to do is a few things. It's going to get this important recurring work off your plate. It's difficult to delegate one-time things, uh, you know, tasks that are unique, that are not going to happen very often. It's much easier to delegate tasks that, that happen with high frequency and that follow the same pattern. Because you've got to be able to document it. You've got to be able to write some kind of an SOP for somebody to, to follow. Okay. So, um, but if you can do that, then you can get this work off your plate and you can do it in a way that's going to make you feel very comfortable uh, about the fact that you yourself are not, are not doing it anymore. And then most importantly, perhaps, is at the same time that you're getting work off of your plate, you're giving an opportunity for your team members to get some professional development for themselves. And uh, this is so, so important uh, to give people a chance to, uh, to become smarter and more capable and I would even go so far as to say that if you're not delegating, you're almost robbing your team members of the opportunity to grow professionally and to really en enjoy their work. So, uh, you know, whether you want to do delegation or not, I, I guess I'm really suggesting you have to do this. It's not just about you. It, it's also about your uh, your team members. All right. So. Um, and as I said, this is a way to gradually let go of a task until you know that it can be done as well as it needs to be done. Uh, I told you about the hiring handbook. And, and here, let me take a sip of water. Here's a reference to that right now. So in the handbook, when you go in there and check it out, what you're going to see is a bunch of ideals. And you're going to see a life cycle approach to acquiring uh, you know, talented people uh, for your team, uh, retaining them, and then in, 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 in inevitably saying goodbye. Everybody leaves the team sooner or later, and you wanna do that with a lot of grace and, and, and human dignity. But there's a retention ideal, it's the fourth one, and you can see it on the, on the screen here, that you wanna create learning and growth opportunities. Now, where did this ideal come from? Again, it came from these 50 very experienced hiring managers who said, you, you know, to the, to, the, to the greatest extent possible, you need to do this. And, and, and it's ideal if, if you do it. Um, uh, so and I'll make some other uh, references to the, to the handbook as we go along. Now, the secret, the big trick to using this tool and technique that I'm about to share with you is that you have to try to see uh, a delegated task as a type of a decision. And if you can do that, if you can, if you can kind of see it through the lens of a decision, then that's going to make this uh, a lot better. And let me give you an example of a decision. So let's say you've got, you know, a policy uh, about uh, some aspect of your security program and that that policy is required, but you do have an exception approval process for, for that policy. Let's say it's your, your multi-factor authentication policy and you require multi-factor authentication for remote access. Um, but people inevitably show up and say, you know, I I'd like to request an exception. Now, instead of you handling that all the time as the team lead, um, maybe you're handling it now <clears throat> and it's a lot of work and it's dragging you down. This could be something that you could delegate and you're not really delegating um, again, for this tool to work, you're not delegating um, the, the sort of like the handling of the request so much as you're delegating the decision about, you know, should should the exception request be approved or should it be denied? That's really the way to think about it. All right. So here's the model that uh, that I really enjoyed from the Fierce Conversations book. And uh, Susan uses this tree as a way to describe a series of, of, of steps in the delegation process that you can use in order to slowly and in a very uh, managed way, uh, give a very important decision to somebody and, and allow them the time to, to become more uh, competent in it and more confident in it. And the way this works is you kind of start at the bottom and, uh, and, and at the bottom of a tree are roots. So if you're uh, delegating to somebody and you start them at the root level, you're, what you're saying to them is, okay, uh, I want you to look at each of these exception requests that comes in, and I want you to uh, 
come up with a decision about whether you think that request should be approved or, or, or rejected. And you've given them training, you've given them the criteria so they should know, uh, you know whether something should be approved or not. But you're saying to them at the root level is, I want you to recommend to me what you think the decision should be. I want you to explain why you think that's the recommendation, but I'm going to make the decision, all right? So this is where you start off in root. Now, once somebody shows that they can do this a few times, then you can move them up to trunk, right? Which is the next step up. At trunk, you're telling your delegate, okay, now I want you to be able to make the decision. But before you tell anybody, I want you to, to uh, report your decision to me so that I can give it a sanity check. And then and then, as long as it passes the sanity check, then then you can go ahead and tell them what the uh, what the answer is. So you let them do that for a while, and then you can move them up to the third level, which is a which is a branch. At the branch level, what you say to your delegate is, "You're doing great at this. What I want you to do now is I want you to make decisions. I want you to tell people what the decisions are, and all I need is a report uh, of what of what you've done." on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know, whatever you feel is the is the reporting frequency that you need to see. And uh, and so I hope you can see how gradually, right, you're just gradually shifting this work into somebody else's hands and, and you've got the ability to, to actually monitor, right, up to the branch level, how well they're doing at it. And so you could actually stop this delegation at any time or hit the hit the pause button if you feel like the delegate isn't going in the right direction with this. Maybe even walk back a decision at the branch level. Now, the top level of the tree is the leaf level. At the leaf level, what you're telling your delegate is make the decision, act on it. Don't even tell me. I don't even know, need to know what you're doing. You're so good at this. There's no reason to even share it with me. But if there is a, an exception that shows up, right? Any kind of weirdness, I, at the leaf level, I would like you to escalate to me any major exceptions that you encounter in the work. And, and this is where you really wanna be with everybody, right? Is you wanna to get to this, this leaf level of, of delegation. So anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a racy matrix. Yeah, you could use a, a racy matrix for this, uh, absolutely. Um, that's not what I'm gonna recommend though. Um, so, how do you know when you can delegate something, uh, whether you use this model or some other model? Well, <clears throat> I've got some criteria here that you can that you can read. Some of it I've already said. Um, is there anything on here that I that I haven't said already? Um, no, I I think I've pretty much said all of this, so I'm not going to read the slide to you. But here's the tool, and um, and I'm going to give you this tool today for yourself. I'm going to I'm going to drop the the link into. Um, into Discord here in in just a moment, but I want to take a moment and I want to I want to kind of explain what's going on here. So, um, the top half of this tool is just uh, boilerplate. You you really don't you don't change it too much. You know you're going to change out the name of your delegate, right? Peter Gibbons. You're going to get Peter's name out of there. Uh, you're not going to use Kip's name. <laughs> you're going to put your name in there. But it's the bottom part of this, right? The list of tasks is where you're going to uh, you're going to fill that part out. And the way it breaks down is you write the task there on the left in the first column. And then under in the description column, you can make that be whatever you want. I kind of uh, have a little bit of uh, some bullets there that either you know summarize what the steps are in the process, or I might list the tools that they're going to need to do it. But I'll have a separate SOP written for them, which could be in, in an email or in a wiki or you know however you do it. And then you see on the right there, you can see the, the progression, right? How somebody starts at root and then they go to trunk and then they go to branch and they go to leaf. And I actually have dates in there. So when you make this, you really want to try to anticipate how long you think it's gonna take for somebody to get through um, this progression. And what I tend to do is think about, uh, think about it in, in two week chunks, unless there's some reason why I, I shouldn't. I also like to have the dates correspond to um, uh, our one-on-ones <clears throat> that we have uh, with each other. That's a really great uh, opportunity to check in and say, you know, I think you're ready for branch. Do you think you're ready for branch? So you, you need to have a lot of uh, a lot of conversation with people when when you do this. 
Um, let's see, is there anything else I need to tell you about this before I give you the URL here? Um, I think you should give the delegate a copy of this plan, however, however you do it, right? Um, so that they'll know when the next opportunity to, to move up is. You'll notice that I've only got three tasks down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when you're delegating, you, you, you want to be careful about how much you try to delegate at any, uh, at any one time. And that's a judgment call on your part. It's going to depend on uh, how accomplished the person is uh, already and how much involvement they may or may not have had um, you know, with, with some of the things that you would like them to do. So, um, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm trying to paste the URL into, um, into Discord and, and Discord thinks for some reason that it's not text, that it's actually some kind of, a, uh, of an image, which it is not. So let's see if I can make that happen again because I want you to have this. It still thinks it's an image. That's if you so want to try, annoying. put it in the uh, Zoom chat. I can grab it and, and copy it over. Um, I'm going to try one more thing because I'm just so dang stubborn. <laughs> okay, so I, I actually pasted it into a text editor and it worked. There you go. Why I should have to do that just drives me crazy. But um, there it is. <clears throat> so this is an actual um, uh, template that I use when I teach the full 16 hour version uh, of this course. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm using it here for you. Thanks Ryan for putting it into, into Zoom for me. I really appreciate that. Um, now, if you're gonna do this, you've got to teach them, all right? And uh, in this era of remote work and distributed work, this might seem um, uh, difficult to figure out, um, but here's how I do it. So I followed this, four-step process here, all right? And the first step is I just wanna show them how I do it. So I'm giving them the SOP, but I'm also making a video. I like to use Loom because it's very easy to use. And when I get done recording the video, there's a, there's a link already there that I can grab and just send it to them. And then the delegate can watch my video over and over and over again anytime they want. And, uh, and I've found that delegates really like that because sometimes they worry that, you know, oh, I got to ask another question about this process. I know Kip talked with me about it. He's probably going to think I'm really annoying because I keep asking him. So a Loom video is great because it just lets them go uh, sort of self-serve. Uh, and so that's where I start. <clears throat> And then after they watch the video, I talk with them. How, you know, how was that? Did it make sense? Did I miss anything? Uh, do you want more detail on something? And as soon as they're feeling comfortable with that, then it's like, okay, great. Why don't you practice that? And when you're ready, I want you to do it while I watch, and then we'll have a conversation. And in that case, it could be a Loom video back to me, or it could be screen sharing. I like screen sharing because as the person um, does the... Um, uh, you know, does the procedure, we can have a real-time conversation or I can coach them about something, you know, that would, that would make the job easier, or maybe they're about to go in, in, a, in the wrong direction for whatever reason. Um, and so I find that a Loom video back to me isn't always the best. Really screen sharing is, is much better. I got a question here. Have you seen pushback from the Loom? I have seen my team not wanting to watch videos, would rather jump immediately to the, you know, that's fine. Uh, Monster, you know, if, uh, if your folks don't want to watch Loom videos, you know, then ask them what they would like and, and do it that way. I'm not trying to suggest that uh, that this approach that I'm sharing with you is the singular best way to do it. I'm just, I find that it works well for me and my team. And it's a good starting point for you as you think about how you might want to do it. Um, application assessment on Loom via Loom video, chicken and egg. <laughs> Yeah, it can be. And also watch out with Loom, right? Because um, if you're going to share uh, a, a procedure that's, you know, confidential or restricted in nature or is going to contain information that's confidential or restricted, be careful about that. I'm not recommending Loom for absolutely everything all the time. You do still have to protect your, your sensitive data. So, you know, factor that in. Maybe Loom isn't the right tool for you. Uh, because of that, maybe you need to get a, a different type of uh, video recording system that will uh, let you better control your, your information. 
All right. So that's the first two steps. And then uh, after step number two, I, I, I find that they're, that they're ready to fly solo. And so they do that. And that's where the one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, can happen. So if I'm not hearing from them at the very least, you know, during the one-on-one -on -one meetings, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to invite them to bring it up with me whenever they want. You know, they can uh, send me a message in Slack or whatever. Uh, but, but number, but by step three, right, it's, they're doing it. We're talking, whatever that looks like for us. And then by, by the time step four happens, they're just doing it. And, um, and I, so I find this, this four step uh, is, is really helpful. Let me talk about some common errors uh, that you could make as a, as a delegator. Um, you might choose somebody that you think is ready, but they're not ready. And how can you know that? I think you'll figure it out pretty early on. But if you get that nagging feeling, right, as you're starting to share, you know, with with somebody what it is you want them to do, and you're going through that process of um, of teaching them, but you're finding that you're getting, uh, you know, feedback that's less than uh, encouraging, then maybe they're not ready, and you should uh, maybe dial it back a little bit. So, so you know, be be thinking about that, right? How do I know if somebody's ready or not? You may be uh, training them in a way that's confusing or incomplete, and they may not tell you, and they might not tell you because they don't understand the task yet. So just be on guard for uh, for mistakes that they might make because your training somehow wasn't everything that it should have been. That's easy to fix, um, especially if you're at the root level, right? Because they're not they're not pulling the trigger yet. All right, so um, so that's something you can detect. I've made this mistake. Um, you may not allow enough time for the delegate to practice, right? You might start with like a two week uh, window for them to move from, you know, from like root to trunk. And you might be all excited, like, hey, let's get, let's get you to trunk, but they may not be ready. So, um, so be careful about that. Um, that, that could backfire on you uh, pretty badly if you're not careful. Uh, I showed you in the template how, how you might want to start somebody off not at root, but maybe they already have a certain amount of capability. And so you want to start them off at trunk, or maybe you want to start them off at branch. Um, and, and that's fine, but don't get so excited about this that you move them to leaf too quickly. Um, and then a, another common error is starting them at root. If they already know about this and you start them at root, that's a, a demotivator, right? Because nobody wants to be uh, considered remedial right to where they really are. And then don't be over controlling. Once you reach leaf, back off. Uh, you don't, you know, you've gone through this process. The point of going through the process is, was to have confidence that somebody could actually do this task that you've delegated to them. Um, if you don't back off, you could get accused of being a micromanager. You could be uh, accused of doing this before you even reach leaf. You might be accused of this right off the bat. I've had that happen to me. And, um, and why is that? Well, here's some reasons, right? Like they may have never experienced a, a controlled delegation like this before uh, with OJT on job training. So to them <clears throat> right off the bat, like, huh, this may seem like you're micromanaging me because Kip, you've just given me a, a detailed SOP. You've given me this Loom video. You want to talk about this all the time. And because I'm, you know, I haven't reached a branch yet. I, I can't make decisions yet. I have to run every, everything by you. Right. So make sure you think through this and make sure you tell the person that you're that you're going to do this with. It's like, I'm not doing this because I want to stay involved in the task. I'm doing this because I want to set you up for success. If I'm overly setting you up for success, just let me know. Um, but also realize that at some point you're going to get to leave as soon as you can get there. And then I'm out like I'm not going to be there uh, standing next to you. Uh, like that. Okay. So uh, just be on guard. If you see it on their face, you're like, you know, this guy's going to micromanage me to death, you know, make sure you, you bring this up. Right. And then try to show them as you go through the process, right. That, that you can go hands off and that you can, and that you can back off and give them the space that they need to, to, to be successful. Okay. So now I want you to try this. So I've given you the, the link. Hopefully you've been able to open it up successfully. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about somebody who's on your team. And uh, by the way, you should have to make a copy of this Google Doc. Uh, I, if I didn't, <laughs> if I was a good sysadmin, I, I, I set it to read only. And, and you, should, you should only be able to make a copy for yourself. What I want you to do is I'm going to give you 10 minutes. 
And I'm going to watch the timer so you don't have to. And I want you to create at least two tasks that you would like to delegate to somebody on your team. And I want you to think about a real person and I want you to think about real tasks because ideally you're going to take this exercise and you're going to go back to work and you're going to use it. I would love for you to do that. And I want you to get a schedule of targeted dates to get them from root to leaf in a reasonable amount of time. <clears throat> or you might start them at trunk or you might start them at branch. I don't know, but I'm going to start the timer. You've got 10 minutes. If you have any questions uh, or issues, just drop them in um, the Discord channel. I'm going to watch right now uh, to see if any come up. And um, and I guess we can do now, what, mid-show banter, Ryan? Is that what you'd call it? Mid-show banter, that sounds like a new thing. <laughs> Well, I need I need to give people a chance to to really do this, right? <clears throat> um, and I don't want to try to teach them while they're doing uh, doing the exercise. So, all right, all right, we can do some mid show banter. Mid show banter. I'm here so, for that. Have you seen any uh, questions uh, that I, that I might have missed that you think uh, that I need? Uh, to the only thing I, I I saw of note was uh, someone requesting slides, which uh, I do need to get from you. Yep, I will. Well, we can I will do that drop after. Yeah, or unless so you have them handy. I don't have them handy, but I will make them available. And we should probably tell people where they can find it. Right, there's a slides dash resources channel right next to the webcast live channel, and that's where I should put it. Right. Exactly. Look at you, the expert. Well, uh, I <laughs> I just know I've struggled a lot with this, right? And I think I'm figuring it out. So you've been delegating to me, Ryan. Have I reached Leaf yet? <laughs> Reach leaf, yeah. Leaf, leaf is the is the uh, level of delegation where uh, I can do the job and you don't need to help me anymore. You're you're very close. You're very close. <laughs> you're out on a branch, and Ryan's yeah. sawing the branch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do see another question here. Is this being recorded? Uh, the answer is yes. It is being recorded. We'll have it up on YouTube, in on our anti siphon YouTube channel. If you. I'll, I'll drop a link here in, in a moment, but uh, uh, if you jump onto YouTube, it'll be ready right after this is over and you can watch the whole thing again nine times. I always say nine times because nine that's times. just like, yeah, nine times it, it's, it is known. You oh, I know why. Times. I know why. I, I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Ferris Bueller, right? Ferris Bueller's absent, absent nine times. Nine times. That's right. Okay, so watch it nine times. Um, let's see, Mr. Bigglesworth, is there an archive for previous slide resources? I have no idea. Do you know, Ryan? It would be the slides channel, but I think we we clear it out every so often. Oh, I didn't know you were into binge and purge. Okay, we we are <laughs> for slides, just slides. For slides, yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, coming up on three minutes. You got seven more minutes. I hope that you are getting your uh, your template, your delegation tool template. I hope you've thought about somebody on your team that you would love to delegate to, and that you're creating at least two tasks with uh, with a schedule of how you're going to move them from root to trunk to branch to leaf in a reasonable amount of time. And um, and then also think about whether you'd like to share what you've done uh, with the folks who are on the webcast today. Again, it's it can help a lot to to share what you've done with other people and get a, get a peer review. Now, if you're on this webcast and uh, or anti-cast, I suppose is what it's called now, and you're not a supervisor, but you would like to have your supervisor delegate to you. How powerful would it be for you to go back to the supervisor and say, hey, I went to this uh, anti-cast and uh, there's this delegation tool that I learned about. Uh, what do you think? You want to give it a try? I would. If I was if I was a supervisor and somebody came to me, I'd be like, yeah, tell me all about it. I'd love to get some work off my hands. Oh, Question from the chat. How do you do this in reverse to your admin? <laughs> How do you do this in reverse? Is that what I just was suggesting? Like, is, uh, is like go to your boss? Yeah. Good timing. I. What do you there know? I anticipated the question. Oh, man. 
that was good. I didn't even try to do that. It's kind of <laughs> magical. <laughs> and then, oh, Haircut Fish says, I am the only one on my team. I am the whole tree. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, that's not bad nice sunny breezy day to be the whole tree kind of pleasant <laughs> yeah but how do you like how do you teach them to direct you better hmm. you might have to fire your boss and get another one i don't know that could be difficult mm. all right we're five minutes into the 10 minute exercise <clears throat> i love uh, there was a comment in here about uh, uh leave me alone yeah leaf level means <laughs> leave me alone love it thank you mr bigglesworth got to be a cat noise whenever I uh, upvote Mr. Bigglesworth. Uh, Monster wants to know about anti-siphon training calendar. Do you see that, Ryan? Oh, we can we can post the link for that. We have a whole calendar web page. Copying. I'll post that in the <laughs> Discord right now. Yeah, you did it. I see it. And now to Zoom chat. Yep, I see it there too. Ryan, have you explained to anybody lately what your alias means? R oh, my G alias. R G P photog. Which, yeah, uh lately I guess not. So R G P photog, that's simply my initials, and then photog is short for photography. And I didn't want to put photography because it was it's just too damn long. So I, mm. I nicknamed it into Photog. That's what that means. And oh, then the, okay. my other alias, the Shootus, that was given to me by by John Strand because I do photography and and he, somehow he references the movie called The Shootus. It's John Wayne's final film. Oh. And uh that was about shooting guns, but my name is more about shooting videos and, and photos. So, so and that's here you where, are you know, stuck every, on everybody an in, in the Wild West Hacking Fest has to have a, a Western theme nickname. So that became mine. Ah, okay. Cool. Well, there you go, folks. Now you know. Um uh, oh, the training calendar for October to December, Ryan, specifically. That's a that's a deputy question. Oh, too bad the deputy wasn't here. I think she's lurking. <clears throat> By the way, who's the sheriff? Or did they get shot? <laughs> is John the sheriff? We should... Who is the sheriff? I don't know. I, I just realized it's like I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen the sheriff. I'm assuming it's John. He doesn't go by the sheriff, though. No. Barking Seal says, I'm unclear. I understand we create two tasks, but what are the numbers, fractions in the right far right column? Okay, those are dates. Sorry, those are there, that's not math. There, there is no math <laughs> in this anti-cast. Uh it's those are dates, right? So like January 1st, or you know, uh, that's what I was trying to do there. So sorry for the confusion. Uh like January 8th, January 22nd, February 4th, February 18th, right? You can you know, write the dates any way you like. We're eight minutes, so we got less than two minutes uh, to go. Doc44 says, John is the model. What does that mean? Am I out of the loop? Why is he the model? <laughs> I think he's referring to the model John Strand. There's two Don Strands. Do you know the tale oh. of two John Strands? No. There, There is another is John Strand. Is this good Strand. or bad? <laughs> Should there it be depends. two? <laughs> it depends. Because the okay. other John Strand did get himself into some some uh, uh, legal trouble, let's just say. Uh-oh. Uh, sort of recently. <laughs> but the, the, there's like a, I wouldn't call it a rivalry, but you know, the, the model John Strand was not a huge fan of John, John Strand, InfoSec John Strand, uh, being so well known because the model John <laughs> Strand, he wants to be the one who's well known. And he kind of accomplished that, but for a not so good reason. He became infamous instead of famous. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, when we say model, you mean like fashion model. Is that what, right? Like he's a legit down the runway? model. Like, uh, not, I don't think fashion was his. Yeah. Not like that. Not like that. But uh, just a model. He's probably done some fashion, but not. 
I don't think it's been the runway kind of of okay. modeling. All right, so we're coming up on ten minutes. Uh, mid show, mid show banter. I think we're uh, we got to wrap that up. Underwear model. Well, John, yes, John, our we John Strand could be an underwear model, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they should have a uh, you know like a a modeling duel. That'd be interesting. It would be interesting. <laughs> I'll <laughs> get I'll him to do it, it at way that. west. <laughs> get him to do it at way west. Okay, uh, so it's been ten minutes. Uh, so we're done with the exercise. Oh, so okay. how did? Uh, thanks, Ryan, for 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 You're mid welcome. show banter. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so how did you do, everybody? Uh, you know, I I can see we've got like two hundred people here, so there should be you know uh, dozens and dozens of people at least, right. Who did the exercise and maybe you want some feedback. If you want some feedback on your delegation plan, uh, take out any names or details you don't want to share. Uh, you might want to set your, uh, generate a URL that's read only, and, uh, you can drop it in, uh, the zoom chat, or you can put it into the discord channel and, uh, I'd be happy to put it on my screen and re and review it together. Or if you just want to ask a specific question, you know that that'll be fine. So let me just let me just take any questions that come up. So Barking Seal says, "Is there any reason why one stage should take longer than the next?" No, no, no reason in particular. It's going to really depend on the task that you want to delegate, and it also depends on the, the 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 delegate's performance. Right? How well are they doing? I mean, you might. I mean, you might assume that it's going to take them two weeks to get from uh, branch to trunk, but maybe they're struggling. Uh, and so you want to give them some extra time. You might give them a third week or a fourth week, or you might decide that, you know what, uh, this just isn't the time to delegate this to you for whatever reason. I mean, maybe maybe they're super distracted. Maybe something awful is going on at, at, at home. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just not a good fit for them at work. So, um, so I hope, hope that helps. Um Let's see here. Check-ins between stages. I think check-ins between stages are great. I don't think it has to be micromanagement. It certainly can devolve to that, right? If somebody is, you know, getting ready to, to get to leaf and you're treating them like they're still at root, then I think an accusation of micromanagement could, 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 could come at you and it might be justified. Um, but yeah, you should check in as often, right, as as you feel that it's necessary based on the person's performance, you should invite them to talk with you about what they're doing at, at any time. Have a nice, open, free-flowing conversation about this. Make sure the person feels that they're very well supported by you. Any value in listing out tasks per stage, or does it get too convoluted at that point? Tasks per stage. Well, what I would do is I would put that in the SOP. The idea of this template that I've shared with you is just summary information, right? Not the SOP itself. So you're going to put that in a separate document. All of the little details that uh, that that need to be paid attention to um, by by your delegate. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank ye, ye welcome. Ah, love the old English. That's great. <clears throat> okay, uh, Ed Delgato is taking a coffee break. And I actually think that's a wonderful idea. Why don't we take a break? Because we've got two hours and we're getting ready to go into uh, the second uh, item that I want to talk with you about and share a very specific technique and a tool with you. And that's about making HR a great partner for you, no matter what your situation is. So um, <clears throat> so let's take a break, 15 minutes. I, I, uh, I'll invite you to come back at the top of the hour. During these 15 minutes, I will continue to answer questions that come into uh, Discord or into Zoom. Um, if you'd like me to review something that, uh, you know, that you've some delegated tasks. Um, if you don't want me to share them on the screen, I won't. If you want me to just look at them, and give you some feedback without sharing them on the screen, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and start a 15 minute timer and uh, go do your bio breaks and uh, maybe finish working on your template so that you can actually have a plan that you can return to work with and start using uh, right away. And in the meantime, let me know what questions you have.
here in the in the chat. Oh, and I've got I've got some uh, friend requests here in Discord. I'll go ahead and handle those while I wait for you guys to ask questions. All right, I got a new friend. Any other new friends here? Parking Seal asks, should this be rolled into other events like the weekly one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You should, you should have uh, conversations about how's it going with your delegated tasks in your one-on-ones for sure. Uh, and then sometimes you may just want to randomly reach out to somebody and say, hey, how's, how's, that, how's that going for you, this, this task that, uh, that you're working on? Um, do you think it's reasonable that you're going to be able to reach branch by next week. That, that's what we had in the plan. But how's that feeling for you? Do you, do you want more time? Or, uh, you know, or maybe you're ready to accelerate, right? Maybe you're ready for branch now. And, and <laughs> we're just wasting time uh, waiting for the, uh, the official date to, to show up. So <laughs> somebody reacted with the fire icon. All I, could, all I could think of in my head was Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> you guys know that's coming back, right? If you've never seen it before, <laughs> it's coming back. Fire, fire. Exactly. That, that was my terrible impression. <laughs> it was good. It was actually pretty good. That was actually pretty good for somebody. Who, now, you either not watched that for a long time or you just watched it last night. I, I can't tell. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, literally watched the movie last night. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a new Beavis and Butthead movie. Not only is the movie new, but that is actually a segue to uh, the new series that's coming out that that Mike Judd uh, judges uh, has been working on. So I actually thought the yeah, Beavis and Butthead do America. I thought that was uh, hilarious. Very funny. I'm and I'm glad uh, to, to hear that the new one is really funny, too. TP for my bunghole. <laughs> Those are words I did not expect on today's What's Cast. <laughs> I can't help it, man. <clears throat> That's classic. That's a classic meme. Cornholio. <laughs> Jet X for the win. Yep. Cornholio. I could I laughed so hard when Cornholio showed up for the first time. I didn't know about that alter ego until I watched the movie. And man, I just I doubled over. People thought I was like convulsing <laughs> in the movie theater, I'm sure. Uh, how's it going with your <clears throat> delegation plan? Is anybody working on a delegation plan? I hope you are. Do you have any questions about it? Any question at all, and I'll be happy to, to take it. Yeah, I'm Generation X. Can you delegate the delegation plan? Uh, if you do, I, I, wanna, I want you to send me a Loom video and teach me how to do that. All right? That's your challenge. <laughs> I need PPTP for my portal. Oh my God, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we do not have a security team on staff developing a potential pathway for infrastructure services. I've looked at DOD 8140. Uh -huh. Should that be used in developing our certification criteria for our talent pool? Clarify, we are not DOD, we are retail. Um, Garbo, that's a wonderful question. Um, I think it's reasonable to use uh, the 8140 as, as a template, but be careful because, um, <clears throat> in DOD, uh, you know, they, you, you have to possess certain requirements in order to get certain jobs and, and there's very rarely, uh, exceptions possible. So I, I wouldn't rigidly adopt, uh, that approach. Um, and I'm not intimate with 40, with 8140. So, I'm not sure if there are other uh, potential um, uh, problems that you could get into. If anybody, if anybody else on the Anticast uh, has an opinion about that, I'd love for you to respond to Garbo about using 8140 as a template for certifications uh, for a retailer in the in the private sector. Radis is saying, "Don't do it, Garbo. It's a trap." But he didn't say why. I don't know if it's a he. Radis didn't say why. They did not say why. Oh, there's lots of opinions about this. Good. So Garbo, looks like you're getting some love over here in Discord. I'm so happy for you. This is great. I hope it's the kind of thing you were looking for. See, this is one of the things about doing, you know, virtual events, right? How, when do you when do you get a chance to chat to people? You know, I'm glad we had a chance to do that today. <laughs> 
Thanks, Andrea. I, I caught like a clip of that show the other day and John Travolta looked like a baby. <laughs> he looked like a little kid. Okay, everybody, two minutes and we're going to uh, move on to the next topic today on our anti-cast. Making a great partner out of human resources. So, all right, so this, let's just recap for a moment, right? So in the first hour of the anti-cast, we, we talked about delegation. We talked about why it's so important for you to get uh, high frequency recurring work out of your hands and into the hands of the people on your team and why that's good for you because it frees you up to work on your program and not in your program. And what I talk when I and I, I really explore this in depth in the course that I teach on the handbook. What are some of the things that you can be doing when you get to work on your program and not in your program? There's some really fantastic opportunities for you to uh, to really move the needle and position yourself as an influencer in your organization. And by influencer, I define that as people come in and seek out your opinion when they're about to make a major change to the org. So rather than finding out way, way, way after the fact that something big has changed and you never had a chance to look at it, people are coming to you in advance. And I want that for you. And so uh, I don't have time to teach that to you uh, today, all of those details, but, but that's a big part of, of why you wanna delegate. The other big part of delegation is you want to create opportunities, professional development opportunities for your team members. So, uh, and, and, that's, and that's going to create the kind of environment that is going to probably encourage your team members to stick around and not think about going and getting a, a different job. So, okay, <clears throat> let's, let's go ahead and start getting into this. How do you make a great partner out of HR? Well, first, I, I, want, to, I want you to get very clear on what is going on? <clears throat> what are the opportunities for you to improve the working relationship that you have with your HR department? So we're going to try a scenario. So the scenario is you need to hire a new team member for your uh, security operations center, or maybe you've got a different open position that you're trying to fill. It doesn't matter to me to you know, either, either role play the SOC uh, position or, or really think about an open one that you have, or maybe one that you are expecting to have later on. Just whatever is meaningful to you. Now, I want you to make a list. What are your largest blockers related to your HR department? So imagine that you're going to open up this position and you, you've you got to interact with, with your human resources department in order to make, make this happen, right? To open the position, screen for candidates, bring people uh, close to you for interviews, extend an offer, and then actually onboard somebody. Think about that whole process. And I'm going to give you three minutes. The timer is running. I want you to make a list and uh, you can make it in a, on a scrap of paper or uh, anywhere. I don't care where you make the list. I don't need to see the list, but I want you to make a list. What are the largest blockers? And this could be a list of like three things. It could be 10 things. I, I don't know how much struggle you're having with your HR department, but I want you to get this stuff written down. That's the first step to dealing with uh, improvements, right? To be able to get to improvements, you gotta know what your issues are. Uh, HR doesn't even understand what a SOC analyst is. <laughs> That's a massive blocker. Uh, yes, absolutely, Ed. Uh, and that happens all the time. That is definitely the number one item on your list. Oh, Papa Golf, nice, look at you. I'm, I'm guessing you're feeling the pain currently to be able to pop a list like that that off so quickly? Or did you already have that list and you just brought it with you today? <laughs> uh, HR is a blocker. They can't grok the actual needs regarding the position. Well, Barking Seal, if you're actually using the word grok with them, maybe that's causing some problems. They don't grok you because you're groking to them. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. Ed, you're transitioning out of your role for some of those reasons. Wow. So it's so frustrating working with HR that you just don't want to do it anymore. And you want to walk away from the imperative to do it. I'm really sorry to hear that. That's awful. 
a grok lobster. Oh, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> well done. Gunner says they don't want to hire the most qualified candidate. You're in two minutes. You got one minute left. Let's get that list going. I've lost five candidates because of their slowness. Yep. Barking seal, sadly, in my experience, HR equals impediment more often than not. Nepotism. <clears throat> We're all remote. Oh, this is good. You guys are making a great, great list. Thank you. Obviously, there's a lot of pain out there. They can't see relevant experience because it's not blatant same job gained <clears throat> they're being too literal low budget yep all right 15 seconds filtering cvs got to get them stop doing that summary hr is broken <laughs> that's that is a totally reasonable place for us to be okay um so uh, from what i saw in discord I'm, I'm seeing a lot of really great stuff and i want you to just reflect on this question what did you think about putting on your list, but you didn't put on your list because that problem is so awful. You don't even want to, you don't even want to think about it. Like you don't even want it on a list because it's just so awful. So if there's anything like that, this is your opportunity to, uh, to purge, right? Just get it all out there right now. I know this is tough. I've had to deal with this myself for years. And what I'm about to share with you isn't, uh, <laughs> is not the fix it all but it could help, it could make a big difference. I, I've used this technique uh, with success. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want, I'm gonna give you three more minutes and I want you to make a list of what have you tried to do to remove these blockers. I want you to add that to your list. You don't need to do a one for one. You can just draw a line down the center of your list or start it, you know, hit return key a few times. I want you to think about what you've tried to do to remove your blockers. The timer is running. You have about two and a half minutes. Gunner says, uh, I do the initial phone screening myself. Papa Golf crying does count. Yes, weeping is an action. I don't think it's very effective, but you know, if it makes you feel better and you can take another run at it, sure, why not? Ed Delgado says, communicate. That's vague. Come on, a little more specific. What kind of communication? Uh, what have you said? How did you say it? What have you tried to remove your blockers with HR? That's what I want to know. Two minutes to go. Consult with HR directly regarding my concerns. Good. But Ed, it sounds like that didn't go well based on the previous comments that you've made. I'm sorry. Radis says, uh, posting jobs in the anti-siphon Discord channel is the best uh, talent pool. Good for you. I'm glad that we have that for you. <laughs> You've tried blocking HR's access to the network as a way of solving your problems. Okay, well, <laughs> I see you didn't do it for reals, but you know I can understand why you'd be tempted to do it. Okay, coming up on two minutes, you got you got about one minute left to add to your list. I want you to write down what have you tried to do to remove your blockers. Papa Golf, thank you so much. Great contribution. Take HR senior recruiter out for drinks and be his wingman in the bar. Radis, did you do that? Or did you just daydream that you did that? No, I've done that. Oh, cool. Did it work? Like, was, was that effective at all? Did it help? I want to know, because I'm going to add that to the list of official approved sanctioned recommendations. It did help. Oh, that's fantastic. Totally did that. It's how I also got hired at the current company. Ass kissing should be required. Oh, should not be required. Indication of cultural issues. Oh, there's a whole, there's a whole other thing I could talk with you about, uh, Barking Seal, but I don't, I don't have the time to to get into it. But if you're able to come to my full training, we talk about that. Okay, so, right, so just think about how you did with that last exercise. You know, think about what you tried, whether it worked or not. And have you given up, right? Have you lost all hope, abandoned hope, all ye who enter? And I really appreciate the conversation that we're having in Discord about this. All right, now here's the next question. I got three minutes. What does a supportive HR department look like to you? If I said to you, tell me what, you know, what, what it would be like if HR supported you the way you would want to be supported, what would you see? What would you hear? What would, what would people in HR do for you, with you? Hopefully not to you. But I, want, I just want to know, what does supportive HR look like to you? 
direct and regular consultation with the teams and hiring managers, and ultimately the final say on the job description. Barking Seal, are you mean, does that mean you get final say? Or they get final say? I think you mean you get final say. Gunner says, get things right, make the right offer. Ed's still uh, saying, I want better communication. Yeah, okay. All right, Barking Seal, got it. You want final say on the job description. Okay, Jen wants postmortems for hiring journeys. That's what would look like a supportive HR department to you. Love it. They should respond similar to the technical. Oh, I don't think I understand. Uh, you want to understand why candidates turn down or reject offers. Oh, Radis, look at you go. Love it. Okay, cool. So we got one more minute. If you haven't shared in Discord or in the Zoom chat, what does a supportive HR department look like to you? I want to hear from you. I want to know. I want the other people in our workshop today to hear what supportive HR looks like to you. Because when I first started hiring people, it was all very vague to me. And I just sort of followed their instructions. Um, you know, the only, uh, this is the thing about hiring, and this is something that we talk about in my in my 16-hour course, and you can read about it in the hiring handbook. Uh, most of us were never really taught how to hire well, how to actually find talented people. All we were really taught was how to not to, how to avoid getting our employer into a lawsuit. And okay, I get it, that that's, that's necessary training, but it's insufficient. Um, so I was, pretty vague about what a supportive HR department looks like. So if there's anybody in our workshop today who also is feeling vague about that, like what exactly do I want? I hope these comments that are that are pouring into the Discord channel right now will help you get that clarity uh, from other people who are struggling with this right now. And if there's a comment in there that really resonates with you, you might want to try a friend request with that person to continue to, to talk about it. All right. Let me tell you what I've, uh, some of the top things that the way that I define a supportive HR department, um, that they understand my needs and that they have a servant attitude. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That's kind of like my best case scenario, right? Best case in a practical world is that they would take the time to understand me and that they would be asking me, how can we support you? Like that would be amazing. Uh, an, ex, a, an alternative, I got a couple of other alternatives as you can see here. Um, it, I, I actually think it's okay if they understand me and support me, but they don't provide very much support and that they mostly just get out of the way, right? Just allow me to, to do most of the heavy lifting, to do the, the screening, to do uh, uh, the interviewing without them getting involved too much. If that's possible, that's that's an acceptable alternative. Um, another way to do it is like, they don't even need to know me very well, uh, as long as they can just sort of like handle some minor things for me, uh, and just kind of stay out of my way and they can forget I even exist and, and, and that can be okay. So those, those are three, um, three, three ways that I look at it. Okay. In order for you to understand what's going on, I need to tell you that there are two, two types of HR departments, generally speaking. There's a strategic department mode, and then there's a transactional department mode, all right? Now, most of you and, and I have worked with the transactional uh, mode of operating for, for an HR department. But I want to take a moment and I want to uh, tell you what, this, what, what does it mean to work with a HR department that is more strategic in its mode? Well, they... This is, a, this is a department that not only says the people are the company's greatest asset, but they actually walk that talk. And the way that you'll see this, uh, the, like the strongest, best possible way of seeing this is that they, uh, they're not overly focused on hard skills when they are searching for candidates. What they're really trying to do is, is hire people for uh, who already possess certain soft skills that really cannot be trained. And I'm talking about curiosity, humility, resilience. There's, there's a whole list. If you go into the hiring manager's handbook and you look up uh, selection ideal number three, you're going you're gonna to see more information 
about this, about what, what are these soft skills that can't be trained and why is that a strategic approach to hiring and why would you want to do that? The other type of HR mode is this transactional mode, which is essentially let's get butts and seats as fast as possible for the least amount of money. And how many shortcuts can we take to do that? And how much work can we push off to candidates through the applicant tracking system so that we don't have to work so hard? They, uh, when, they're, when they do screening, they really focus hard. Uh, they focus mostly on hard skills and they focus mostly on where, where have you gone to school and who, where have you worked at uh, previously as, uh, as shortcuts, right? As easy buttons to try to figure out whether this person uh, is actually uh, valuable uh, to to work with us, so these these are these are two types of HR departments that you might encounter. I'm sure, just based on this uh, description that I've given you now, you already know what kind of HR department you're dealing with, and <clears throat> and when you're trying to be strategic and you're working with an HR department that's very transactional, that is probably where the biggest problems arise. That's where you get the most clash and the most difficulty. And and believe me, I can understand uh, you know why why that happens. Um, the tool that I'm about to to, to teach you is going to help, but there could be some uh, systemic issues that that nobody is going to be able to uh, remove completely. All right. Now, I also want to ask you about your take on hiring because it's not all about HR; it's also about you. And so here's the question. Do you treat hiring as one of the most important duties that you perform for your organization? This came out when we were uh, writing the handbook, and it's actually in foundation, foundation Ideal number two. And the idea here is if you treat hiring as like, oh, I can't believe I got to hire again. Oh, uh, God, where's that job description for last time? Can we just recycle that one? Um, yeah. Hey, HR, just let me know when you got some, uh, some candidates. Okay. I'll be over here doing my real job. That kind of an approach is not a setup for success. And you might be saying to me, eh, that's the best I can do. Like, I don't have time to do any better than that. Well, okay. Go back to the first part of this workshop where I told you that the way to get more time to work on your program and not in your program is to delegate more. All right, that's the answer to you not putting enough time, a sufficient amount of time to really show that hiring is one of the most important things that you do. Hiring is, I think, by definition, working on your program versus working in your program. So I hope you can see how these things are related to each other. And if you're not getting the people that you want on your team, that's gonna keep you from building the kind of strong team that you really want and when you have a strong team, that will continue to free you up to do more work on your program and become the kind of influencer in your organization that I want you to be. So do you, hopefully you see why I chose these two topics for, uh, for the workshop today. All right, so I'm gonna give you an HR security toolkit and I'm gonna drop the, uh, the URL to this into, uh, into our, uh, respective chats here in just a moment. But I want to uh, talk with you about, about how this works. And for some of you, you maybe you've already tried this and, and your reaction is going to be, been there, done that. This is not helpful because you know I, I've, I've tried this and I didn't get anywhere. This is not a magic potion. It is not the same as a bag of pixie dust that if you sprinkle it on a reluctant HR person, all of a sudden they're just going to start paying attention to you. I cannot guarantee that. But if you haven't tried this before, then I think you should give it a shot. So I want you to, this is a 10 step process here, right? And you can modify this to suit your needs. So I want you to look back at your notes as the first step. And I want you to look at, uh, I want you to identify based on everything that you did, the number one way that your working relationship with HR needs to be better. Think about what it means to work with a supportive HR department. Think about the blockers, you know, think about uh, the things that you've tried in the past. And I want you to strategize and I want you to find something that you would like to see changed. And, and I want you to focus on that. Then the next thing I want you to do is I want you to set up a time to talk with your internal recruiter, whoever it is that you're working with over in the HR department. Now, when, I, when I've done this, uh, especially in the beginning when I'm working with a new HR department, you know, I'll just send a message and say, I need your help as the subject. 
And then, then I write an agenda. And I, and in the beginning, I like to keep this very tactical because I don't know this person yet. Um, if I know the person and I've known them for a long time, then you don't need to be so, uh, so formal about this, right? But I'm assuming that maybe you don't know them very well. So you could just uh, set an agenda like, hey, I just want to review the hiring criteria for this open position, right? Then I want you to uh, get this toolkit out. And, and there's a couple of pages. And I'm going to show you them in here in just a second. Uh, page three of the handout has the common cybersecurity org chart. And page four has a service catalog. And if you think this is useful, I want you to use this as a way to educate your recruiter about this position that you're trying to hire for and where it fits kind of in, in, the, in, the, in, the big, uh, in the big scheme of things. Now, you may not be working for a big organization that has an enormous you know, uh, department like this. That's okay. This conceptual uh, team structure still applies. It's just that instead of having um, you know, a lot of people wearing one hat, you've got fewer people wearing more hats and you might be an army of one and you might be wearing all these hats. I, I get it. And I know that I know that everybody on here has got a slightly different uh, situation that they're in. But take this uh, team structure to your internal recruiter and focus on the area that you're trying to, to, uh, to recruit in. Now, page four of the uh, toolkit that I'm going to give you has this uh, security service catalog. So the previous one was kind of more focused on uh, kind of an org chart. Kind of a functional approach. This is really focused on uh, the the specific services that you're offering, and and these two go together, right? So the IDs, the the numbers in the in the first columns on these two tables actually correspond to the bubbles here in the chart. All right, so that's how they that's how they work together. So the next thing I want you to do is I want you to to talk to the recruiter, not just about the open position you have, but the areas in which you tend to hire in the most. Like where is the greatest amount of turnover? Maybe it's the security uh, operations center, right? There's, there can be a lot of turnover there. And then go right to the criteria for the job you're trying to fill now. Explain why that criteria needs to be adjusted. Because I've noticed a lot of you have talked about like, well, HR wants too many years of experience or they want uh, you know, a certain degree, but I don't need anybody with a degree, right? This is where you want to talk with them about how you either need to be more restrictive or most likely you need to be less restrictive in your hiring. And you may need to request an exception to your hiring policies. Um, and so this would, this would be the time to do that. And, and if you don't have a dedicated recruiter that you can go to, maybe you're not that big, or maybe you're so big that nobody's dedicated to you, this would be a great time to reach out to the supervisor of the internal recruiting team and talk with them about having somebody assigned to you uh, who, when you do have an open position, you, you can work with them. Now, this is a, this is a, an approach that I've, used with success. Uh, it didn't always work. But, but in the process, I learned a lot about what goes on in the HR world and why it's so difficult for them to support me sometimes. And I'll give you, I'll give you just like one quick story, all right? So when I was a uh, CISO at a insurance company and I started having this conversation with the HR department, one of the things that I realized, and I was super clueless, and so this was a big epiphany for me, is that the HR department was was really a well-oiled machine to hire customer service department representatives and claims adjusters. Like that was 80% of all the recruiting they did was for those positions. And so I realized that, that they were uh, like looking at my jobs through those filters and they were using their, you know, what worked for them in those positions uh, they tried to use those those techniques to recruit for my positions. And you know what? Some of it translated, most of it didn't. But it but it really let me understand, you know, what it was that was going on so that I could realize what they were wrestling with. And and that insight then allowed me to make very specific suggestions. Now, ultimately, what the where we came where we came to is I agreed to assume. Uh, the burden, like the, the the lion's share of the work of recruiting. And we agreed that they would provide very specific support in very certain ways. For example, I couldn't post a job myself because I didn't have access to that system and I didn't want access to that system. So they agreed that if I if I wrote the job description and um, and they approved it, that they would post it for me. They allowed me to choose where they would post the job description. And so uh, 
uh, anyway, it, it end, we ended up coming to an understanding and that's, that's really where I think you need, you need to get to. Now, you should try this. If it, if it works, wonderful. I'm, I'm super happy for you. If it doesn't work, then I need you to do a retrospective. You can do this by yourself. You can do it with your significant other. Uh, maybe do it with your boss it might be helpful because this is the time where you're probably going to need to start escalating the fact that you know you're you, you've, that you're at an impasse and that you need some help. Maybe you could have made your case better. Maybe there were some things about the way they work you didn't understand, like the story I shared with you. Um, <clears throat> did you make it? Did you make it clear what's what's in it for them? Right. If you say to them, you know, I, I would feel more supportive if you did this. Well, what do they get out of it? Right. And you might say, well, it's ridiculous that I should, um, you know, see it as a as a transaction like that. But the truth of the matter is, is this is just human beings. Right. People need to know that there's something in, in it for them if they're going to really, really commit to something. I can give you a very casual yes any day of the week. Will I will I keep that commitment, though? really depends on how much is in it for me. Um, so so that's that's what you're gonna do if it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the, um, I'm gonna give you the, uh, whatever this thing is, it's a URL. <laughs> Let me give you the URL. I want you to go retrieve this uh, toolkit because I'm gonna ask you to do something with it, of course. And I've got to do the fancy, Schmancy, paste it into a text editor first. There we go. And now it's going to go into Discord. There you go. Oh, thank you, C. Shura, for putting a little uh, pronunciation key next to your handle <laughs> and for putting in the link. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You can type 65 words per minute. That's pretty good. Uh, I used to type really, really fast. I can't do it anymore. I don't know. My fingers aren't cooperating like they used to. Um, so, so go ahead and, and uh, open that up. It's a PDF. And, um, and if I did the permissions correctly, all you should be able to do is read it or make yourself a copy. And I want you to make yourself a copy. And... Um, and then here's where I want you to, uh, to, to, to be able to leave our workshop today with uh, some ideas that you can make happen. So I'm going to give you three minutes. I want you to make a list. What's your number one opportunity to improve your partnership with HR so that they can bring you truly good candidates? I want you to make that list. I'm giving you three minutes to do it. And, um, and you can feel free to share with, uh, with us in in Discord and in uh, in Zoom. Um, Michael Miller in Zoom has put a really good comment in there. Yeah, so I'm going to read this. I've had success sitting down with my recruiter after posting the position and going through a half dozen or so resumes and showing them the things that stand out to me in those so they can better understand what I'm looking for. That's great, Michael. Um, and I, and the other reason why I like that is because um, I appreciate that you're taking uh, kind of like a, a, an educational approach to it, right? Is you, you want to teach them. And I think that's a great place to begin this conversation is by sharing information and, and teaching them. I love it. Mm -mm -mm. And then I got another Zoom comment that says, I don't see the slides. I haven't put them in there yet, but I will. I will put them in there as soon as we're done. Um, after we're done with the uh, uh, with the anti-cast today, not only will I put the slides in there, but I'm going to go back through the live chat in Discord. And if you've asked any questions that I haven't seen or answered uh, during the the, the anti-cast, I'll go ahead and answer them in Discord. So I'll, I'll actually spend some time doing that for you. Okay, we're at a minute and 30 seconds. So you got about half the time remaining. I want to know what's your number one opportunity to improve your partnership with HR. And your number one opportunity might be to just minimize contact with them. <laughs> you, you might have been fighting this fight for so long that you're just done. And I can understand that. And, uh, and you know what? And if that's, if that's going to improve things for you, then I hope that's what you get.
<laughs> stealth hiring. Hmm. Stealth hiring. So that would be like shadow HR, right? Where you where you go out to uh, Fiverr <laughs> and hire people to do stuff for you on an as needed basis. <laughs> Why not? It reminds me of uh, uh, a story that I read in the newspaper where a guy had outsourced. He was a full time employee. He'd outsourced his job and uh, somebody, you know, overseas. And uh, he spent, I don't know, like an hour a day supervising their work and turning it in as, as his own. Um, <laughs> eventually got caught. Uh, let's see. Number one opportunity. Don't treat HR like an adversary, says Radis. Good. Help them with their issues and concerns and they'll be more inclined to cooperate, says Ninja Pixie. Papa Golf says playing fast and loose with HR policies. That's your number one opportunity to improve your partnership with HR. Okay. <laughs> we need to stay in touch. You need to tell me how well that's happening. Okay. It's been three minutes. So um, hopefully you've identified your number one opportunity to improve your relationship with HR. And um, now is there, is there a real number one opportunity that you didn't put down because you thought it was too ambitious? Okay. Maybe it is too ambitious, but I think you should put it down and maybe you baby step your way to it. All right. But, uh, uh, don't shortchange yourself. Okay. Uh, as, as you do this. Um, and then here's another question for you. Three minutes. How could HR help you or how could you help HR do better screening? And I love that Michael Miller completely anticipated this question, uh, with the comment that he made in zoom. And I love his, uh, his suggestion, which again, I'll just repeat it for you that he actually posted the job, waited, waited until some resumes showed up. And then he sat down with the internal recruiter and went through half a dozen resumes and actually showed the recruiter the things that stood out, which I imagine would be like good things versus as well as bad things. Um, and uh, and so some tra some training. So that's one way to do it. Can you think of any other ways? I would love to, uh, uh, I would love to, to see your comments in Discord or in Zoom. Just one or two ideas for how you could help them do better screening. Wall of shame. Oh, struck out wall of shame, says Ninja Pixie. Ninja Pixie, are you saying that you you tried to partner with them, but you but you weren't able to? Love for you to clarify that. Go to the meetups and find, can't find candidates yourself. <clears throat> I don't have a problem with that. In fact, if you, uh, if you come to my class or if you read the handbook, we talk about that. We talk about the fact that, that you need your own talent pool and the local meetups are a wonderful potential talent pool for you. Oh, Ninja Pixie says, we vetoed an HR wall of shame for employees or candidates that messed up. Thank you. <laughs> now I get it. I wouldn't have even thought that that, that 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 would even be considered. Uh, I guess I could understand. <laughs> but one of the ideals that we have in the handbook is that you should hire in a way that uh, that 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 creates relationships with candidates uh, rather than treating them as uh, as numbers or objects. Okay, you got about thirty seconds left. <laughs> Barking Seal says hiring postmortems. Yes. Okay, so here's the next thing as we wind down that three minute uh, exercise there. Here's, here's my next exercise for you. I want you to look at the service catalog on page four of the toolkit. Hopefully you've retrieved that by now and, uh, and, you've, and you've got it. And I want you to think about that, that job, right? Remember, we opened up with this uh, idea that you either have a real job that you're trying to hire right now, or, you know, I said you could, you know, pretend that it's a security operations uh, center analyst, you know, however you want to do this. So think about that job. I want you to look at page four of the toolkit, and I want you to identify what are the neighboring services that could be helpful if you went to HR and you were coaching them and you said, well, look, I'm trying to find a strong candidate in this area, but if you can find me a strong candidate in these 
adjacent areas, they might be a great fit for the area that I'm trying to hire for, right? So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to broaden the HR perspective and, and, and keep them from being too literal about the job you want, because maybe there's some, some jobs, some people with experience in, in neighboring areas, and maybe they could be very successful in the area that you're hiring for. So three minutes. I want you to write down one or two ideas. And by the way, Barking Seal, I got another idea. Since you liked hiring post-mortems, how about this? How about a hiring pre-mortem? Have you ever heard of a pre-mortem, right? What's a post-mortem? A post-mortem means after the thing has died or after we've done something. A pre-mortem, right? Let's talk about it before we do it. And let's think about all the ways it could go wrong. And let's think about all the ways that, you know, the things that we could do to help it go right. And when I was uh, learning how to fly airplanes, uh, we, 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 we didn't call it pre-modem and post-mortem, but we, we would talk about what we were going to do in the, in the air. We did it. And then when we got back, we talked about what we did. Mm. <laughs> Popcorn, man, you're making me hungry. <laughs> pre-mortem, how we can kill the patient. <laughs> you're one minute into your three minute time slot here. Look at page four of the toolkit, identify neighboring security services that, that you could say to the, to the internal recruiter, please look for people that have these experiences as well. Oh, that's good. So you've identified three, Jen, Jen Sherry, I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Um, you've identified three, more than three, and all of the right side. Perfect. So it's working for you. Okay, Radis, I'm glad you saw it. Good. So it sounds like some people are feeling like this is a this toolkit could be helpful, and I hope that it is. I hope that this really uh, creates a breakthrough for you in your in your re working relationship with human resources. Less than a minute to go. Did you look at page four of the toolkit? And have you identified neighboring services? Can you see yourself sitting down with an internal recruiter? showing them pages three and four and having that conversation. Think about that. You know, uh, how could you do that? Okay. Barking Sale says, what hasn't been mentioned is outflanking HR by articulating to leadership the impact of a good or a bad hire. Yeah. You know, that's an escalation, right? If, if, your, relation, if your working relationship with HR gets so uh, bogged down and crummy that you just can't go anywhere anymore, then that you, you probably need to take that to your, your supervisor, whoever your supervisor is, right? You're gonna need to escalate it because it's dysfunctional and broken and it's keeping you from, from building the kind of strong team that I'm sure your boss wants you to build. So this that would be a massive blocker and you've, you've got to deal with it. So that would be an escalation in, in, uh, in my thinking. Um, and I would not start a war. I don't think that your goal in, an, in a flanking maneuver is to destroy the enemy. <laughs> I think your goal is to get their attention and help them realize that they need to, um, you know, up their game, right? That they need to make some changes, that they need to mend, mend the relationship that you're trying to work on. Um, and yes, I keep saying the R word over and over and over, right? Relationship, relationship, relationship. Um, because when you're working on these issues that we're talking about here, it is about human beings and it is about relationships. And, um, and, and I think you will do well to, to really embrace that. Um, at least that's, that's what I found for myself, because I, in the beginning, I didn't really approach it as a relationship. I, I approached it more as a transaction, right? I need somebody, uh, I need to hire somebody. Will you please help me hire somebody? And, um, you know, let's go through the steps. Uh, and I really didn't put the human, the human uh, part of it in there uh, as much as I, as I should have. And when I started doing that, thing, things got better and easier for me. Um, okay, so hopefully you found a service and a neighboring service pair or triad. Some of you found many, which I think is wonderful. Um, so I hope that worked for you. So as we start wrapping up uh, our workshop for today, our anti-cast, what else is on your mind? We have a few minutes. I would be very glad to uh, try to answer related questions to what we've talked about today, whether it's delegation or whether it's improving 
uh, the, the, the working relationship that you have with human resources, or it could be, it could be something about the hiring handbook, or it could be something about um, uh, interviews or screening, you know, the actual hiring process, um, any of that. Trust that they may not be the enemy. Verify first. Good. Yeah, that's kind of the uh, the 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 flip in philosophy, right? From uh, from perimeter based network security to zero trust, right? We verify and then we trust you. If you can successfully authenticate, answer me these questions three. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Now I'm gonna have to watch it this weekend. Anybody know what movie I'm talking about? Yeah, Radis. Look at you guys. Nice. Haircut Fish has even got a, uh, a, a, a convenient acronym. <laughs> yeah, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Good times, good times. Come on, what's on your mind other than uh, old, awesome movies? By the way, I'm looking down at, at my Discord uh, chat here, which is why... I'm forcing you to look at the side of my head. Haircut fish. How old's your daughter? 11. Okay, so you showed her the rabbit scene. Is 11 not quite old enough to watch the whole movie? I'm wondering because I've I've got I've got young daughters too. <laughs> it is but a flesh wound. <laughs> Life of Brian was really good. I did enjoy that. You know, one of the things about Life of Brian that I enjoyed the most is how outraged uh, the uh, religious leaders were, but truth of fact, I, I don't, I didn't see a, a hint of disrespect in there, uh, for religion myself. I thought really that was a movie about how silly people can be. <laughs> Your 11 year old sings always look on the bright side of life. That's fantastic. Oh, look at Papa golf. Bis biggest challenge for me is writing engaging non-gendered job descriptions. Ooh, that's a good one. And I assume that you're talking about more than just pronoun problems, right? You're probably talking about, because um, I've seen a study about the use of certain words as being encouraging to men and discouraging to women or vice versa. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, you're looking to improve gender diversity. Well, good. I think um, I think I think diversity on your team is is a good idea, and I want to tell you what I what I think about that. Guess what? There's a whole section on this in the hiring handbook, so go go read that too. Um, but to me, diversity of thinking is really what I'm looking for, and one of the one of the causes of diverse thinking is is that people have grown up in different. Uh, situations that I've grown up in, or they've had different jobs than I've had, or they uh, they, they they live in a different culture than, than I live in. They speak a different language than I speak, right? So there's all kinds of of great reasons uh, to um, you know to 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 identify uh, diversity or, or the reasons why diversity shows up. I don't think diversity should be a simplistic matter of. Well, we got a brown guy on our team. That's diverse, right? Oh, and then we got a woman. So that's diverse too, right? Those superficial, uh, you know, surface level diversities are really not what we, we want to go for. Neural diversity, absolutely. Now, the thing about diversity, though, is that it takes a tremendous amount of emotional maturity to work on a team with a lot of diversity. Um, that's why... Uh, Hiring managers sometimes, and I think they fall into this trap unconsciously, uh, but sometimes hiring managers reflexively just hire people who are just like they are, because it's easier to just be around people who automatically think and behave the way that you do. Hiring and building a diverse team requires a lot more emotional maturity, because people are going to say and do things that... Uh, that your lizard brain, your amygdala, is going to you know react badly to uh, as a knee jerk reaction, and you've got to have enough front of mind executive function to be able to tell your amygdala to sit down and shut up because that's not a threat. So, all right, anything else on your mind that you want to talk about? As long as we're here, 
Let me tell you a couple of free resources in addition to the hiring handbook, which I hope you'll go check out. So what, what have I given you today? You got the handbook, you got the delegation tool, you got the HR security uh, toolkit. Um, there's my book. My book's not free, but it is low cost. Uh, if you're having trouble creating a productive conversation with your senior decision makers who don't know much about cyber risk and cybersecurity, I would recommend part one of my book to you. I wrote part one of my book specifically for the senior decision makers who don't know anything about this subject. And it's easy to read. And if you read it and then do a book club with them, then that could be a way for you to spark a ongoing productive conversation with them. You reading my book will give you a vocabulary that you may not have right now. And, and it will certainly give them a vocabulary that they may not have. But the most important thing is you'll have the same vocabulary. And, um, and I've got stories and analogies. There's all kinds of things in part one of my book. And you can say to your senior decision maker, hey, there was this story on page 58, sounded a lot like us, what do you think? So, um, so that's a good use case for, for my book. You can get it uh, soft cover, Kindle, you can get it um, uh, as an audio book, actually. I recorded that. It was kind of fun. Don't know if I want to do it all the time. But uh, anyway, another potential resource for you just in your, in your work. And then I, I am the co-host of a podcast. And my co-host is Jake Bernstein, who's a cybersecurity and privacy lawyer. And all this podcast is, is a lawyer and a CISO talking about what are the big issues of the day and doing it without too much jargon doing it in a way that uh, anybody could really uh, participate in that conversation. So uh, we're at our fifth year of the podcast. We just released uh, episode 111 and it's got some good stuff in there. So um, yeah, I would love for you to check it out. Tell me what you think and would love to have feedback. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. The formal portion of our anti-cast has come to a conclusion, but we still have 10 minutes. I'm happy to stick around. I want to know what's on your mind, uh, what questions you have, what comments you have about this topic, any topic. Uh, happy to happy to hear from you. I hear you, Ryan. I hear you squeaking I'm your back. chair. I'm back. I, I was moving the mic, boom, mm. making some, some squeakies. I, I know we've built up quite a playlist of movies that you're going to have to watch now, so we've got <laughs> that. Yeah, that too. Yep, you got to play. In fact, I should probably post the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, uh, folks in the in the in the uh, Discord chat. Uh, you're very welcome. I'm so glad you were here to um, you know to be with me for a couple hours. That's no small commitment in the world we live in. That's a big deal. So thank you, and I'm glad you got something out of it. Stan, I love it. The banana thing. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> oh, what a great, uh, what a great reference. So long and thanks for all the fish. 42 back to you. And uh, don't be a stranger. Oh, you're welcome, Ninja Pixie. <laughs> Dog nose. Oh, Radis, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Other countries, yeah. Um, let's see. Completely, either completely unqualified, failed to show up with the country VP interview after I interview them, although he's a bit of a roadblock. <laughs> um, so I'm not an expert at hiring people in other countries. However, this idea of you know uh, having uh, unqualified people or people fa failing to show up for their interview you know that happens in in my country right i don't know what country you're in but that happens here in the us all the time so what i would encourage you to do is think about how can you uh, have some pre-screening activities to help identify people who are not qualified and people who flake out and don't show up at uh, at the interviews right so what you want to do is you want to test for those things early, early on in the screening process um, and, and weed them out that way, right? So uh, what could you do? Well, for, uh, for people who are completely unqualified, you could give them a short, uh, practical 
uh, test of some kind to do. I wouldn't make it a big one. And I know they can, you know, that they can, they, that they can cheat. Um, uh, but, but you, you know, you'll be surprised at how many people just won't even bother doing it. They'll be so put off that you even ask them to spend 15 minutes and I wouldn't make it a multi-hour thing, but you know, just anything at all to just sort of, you know, screen, you just want, you're trying to screen people out. And then as far as not showing up for the interview, uh, what I would do there is, is I would, um, I would test their ability to show up uh, for a, uh, a phone call or a Zoom call on a certain date at a certain time and just see if they'll even do that. No guarantees here, right? Uh, you can still have people flake out, but, um, but, but this is how I think you should be uh, uh, thinking about the issue. Okay, Radis, you're, okay, India, uh-huh. Yeah, I definitely have no idea <laughs> how to hire in India. Um, but ho hopefully those thoughts, uh, you'll find them to be helpful. Oh, thanks, Ryan, for uh, dropping the link to to the class. Appreciate that. Yeah, it seems like a good time to remind and relink everybody. Via, I dropped in the Discord the link to the class, and I'm about to drop the link to the replay on our oh, YouTube great. channel. Great, there it great. is in the chat now. So, so you can re-review. Thank you. So Radis says... They do the first interview with me, but flake on the second in-person interview. Huh. How interesting. I, I don't have a I don't have a, a, a very specific suggestion for you. Does anybody who's still hanging out with us have a suggestion for Radis? If, if you do, uh, please uh, help help them out. Uh, there, there are ways that you can hire people in other countries and have the official um, employer be somebody in country who understands what the laws and the regulations are and can take care of that for you. I don't know much about that. I just know that that sort of thing does exist. Andrea, what are you doing to me? Not found, not found, not found, not found. What was that? Now it's gone. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, indeed. I don't know what Comment that was. Not found. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must have deleted it. I don't know. Maybe maybe Andrea was replying. Maybe Andrea, she, maybe she pasted the wrong thing. Maybe you failed their interview. Yeah, yeah, right. But even still, why would they agree to go to the second interview? Why wouldn't they just turn it down? Right? Why wouldn't they just have the professional courtesy to say no thanks? It's kind of frustrating, right? I don't know. <laughs> they get infinite vacation. In Europe, yeah, sort of, sort of they do. They get a lot of it, that's for sure. Like right now, uh, it's August, and um, I am trying to uh, uh, get a deal uh, struck with a European company, pretty big one. And uh, so we were talking today. It was early my time. It was late in the day for them. And I said, well, when can we talk again about this, right? And bear in mind that as we record this, it's August 11th. And, uh, and I'm only trying to talk to three other people right in Europe in the same company. And we start comparing calendars and the next available date is September 8th. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are on mega holiday. <laughs> as the next time I could get all three of them together. And even at that, they're like, I don't know, I'll have to reschedule some stuff. Please, would you? <laughs> yeah okay radis my company has unlimited pto i was wondering when somebody was going to uh talk about that but isn't unlimited pto isn't i mean i've never been in a, in a system like that but don't people say that that's kind of like a uh you know a, a difficult situation to be in because you've got no guidelines at all and so people don't tend to take very much vacation because they're concerned about you know mm. uh getting judged for being gone too long i don't know Yeah, syntax bearer. Good for you. That's exactly what I was saying. Huh. All right. We only have three minutes left. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Ryan, is, All there right. any, is, there, is there any wrap up uh, banter that we need to do for folks? Sure. Uh, to thank everybody for joining us for this right. uh, workshop slash webcast with Kit Boyle. We've shared the links out for his class if you want to continue on this, uh, this path. And he, you, you will be in Deadwood, right? Is that correct? 
I will physically be physically in Deadwood. In Deadwood. So yep. hopefully uh, we'll see some I will of you guys bring there. Copies, I will bring copies of my book for free. So if you come to Deadwood and you find oh. me, I will give you, I will hand you a free soft, co- uh, soft cover, right? Like paper, a paper version awesome. of my book. And he might even sign it if you ask him nicely. I don't know why anybody would want me to do that, but I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> why, why not? Get I just the don't opportunity. think. Yeah, it just, you know, I've signed a lot of books for people, but I still don't feel like, I don't know what it is. I just don't feel like, uh, you know, that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I guess, uh, pot imposter syndrome. I don't know. I don't that's know what to it. talk it up that's to. That's what it is. Yeah, I, th- I think that's it. <laughs> Could be. But Could be. you have a book, it's an accomplishment. You might as well sign the book. Oh, I will sign the book. Don't don't worry about that. If you want me to sign the book, I'll sign the book. I'm just admitting right now that I feel weird inside when I do it. That's all. All right. All right. That's fine. Uh, uh, what else am I forgetting? Uh, the recording, again, will be on YouTube after this is over. Uh, I'll put the slides questions? in the slides channel. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Slides. Very important that we have yep. that. That will be in the slides resources channel in our Discord. And I will uh, pop the... Uh, link to that in the let me grab it first multitasking is hard i'm going to put that in our stream chat one more time just for the heck of it make sure people see that as we exit out of here so it is right about one minute away from 3 p.m my time here in orlando and we're about to say goodbye. So thanks again for coming. Any other questions, drop them in the Discord chat. I'm, uh, Kip will see them and, and guide you along. Yep. Thank you You can very connect much. with me on LinkedIn or you can shoot me an email. I will do. I will read every email you send me. I'll do my very best to respond to everyone I can. Awesome. How, thanks, how everybody. about that for customer service? <laughs> all right. You get what Killing you pay for. Fire. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, all.